Building on episode 44, where John Grinnell and I had a virtual conversation about cryptocurrency, I wanted to take the time today and really speak about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, well, it's the most known cryptocurrency. And if you're listening to this episode, you're either in one of two camps. You either own it or you don't. So I'm hoping to take a couple minutes today, share with you why I invest and maybe why you should too. And like John said at the end of the episode, Bitcoin isn't too expensive. So just go buy a little bit and see what happens. I'm Jared Carpenter, and this is Wi-Fi and Water. In June of 2017, I was living in DC. And it was in and around that time, I stumbled across an article. And then I watched a video, and then I think I even watched a documentary. To be honest, it's really quite hazy. But in June of 2017, I was living in DC. And I remember very distinctively buying my first amount of Bitcoin. I took the day and with my partner at the time, we drove about 45 minutes outside of DC after I had gone to Google Maps and found a Bitcoin ATM. If you don't know what a Bitcoin ATM is, it's just an ATM where you're going to give it dollars and it's going to give you Bitcoin or you're going to give it Bitcoin and it's going to give you dollars. They're popping up all over. And unlike 2017, if you search Bitcoin ATM on Google, it's probably one right down the street. So at the time, I didn't know that I could go on an exchange and connect my bank account and buy Bitcoin. So this is how I did it. I went, I bought $200 in this machine and it scanned a QR code on my digital wallet and it gave me $180 back in Bitcoin. The 10% fee was a little hefty, but at the time I didn't know better and I just had to have my Bitcoin. I remember being ravenous about getting my Bitcoin. If you're interested, I'll put a photo up on Instagram of the Bitcoin ATM. And yes, I took a picture. It was like the first time going to the movies. It was like an event. So something I'll never forget. June 11, 2017. And I know the date because I kept the printout, which showed me how much Bitcoin I got, my wallet number, etc., etc. Fast forward to today, and I talked about cryptocurrency fairly often with family, friends, and just other people who want to learn about it. I think it's something we all need to learn about. Whether you decide to invest or not, well, that's up to you. And today I'm going to tell you why I invest in cryptocurrency, but more specifically, why I buy Bitcoin and why you should too. And a disclaimer before we get going, I'm not a financial advisor and Bitcoin only makes up about 5% of my cryptocurrency. So I'm not like a crazy Bitcoiner, but I do believe that it's super important. And as we move forward, owning it is going to be pretty important. So here we are. It's the summer of 2021 and Bitcoin, while it hit a top around April of 64,000, is down somewhere around 29,000. And all the people that FOMO'd into it around 60,000 thinking it was going to go to the moon, as we say in cryptocurrency, a lot of them left because if you're new to cryptocurrency, it takes a lot to be able to stay in and see your money get halved. And this is why a lot of people don't invest in, in it. They don't like the volatility of it. It's not as predictable as maybe some of the more traditional stock markets, some of the ETFs. But that's kind of why I think I love it so much, because I know that in the long run, if you hold on to it, it'll be gravy. Now, in a normal stock market, maybe you get 7 to 10% back annually on your money. What does this really mean? This means it's going to take you around seven to nine years. And I'm just doing math really loosely right now. But let's say it will take you about seven to nine years to double your money. So that means if you put in a dollar to get five dollars, we'll take a considerable amount of years. If we go back to 2017 of June, when I put in my $200 and I got $180 of Bitcoin, I've never sold that Bitcoin and it's now worth five times that amount. So Bitcoin for me is an investing option that gives me a much better ROI or return on investment than the traditional stock market. Because most money managers, if they get you anywhere between seven to 12% a year, that's pretty good. But Bitcoin, since its inception, has outdone the S&P 500, which is Standard & Poor's top 500 publicly traded companies in the United States by almost 180 to 200%. What does that mean? It means if you just bought Bitcoin and held, 
you are blowing out the average stock market. You're blowing it out of the water. And I think that's why I like it because I have the discipline enough to hold it and not sell. And I also have the privilege enough to hold it and not sell and be able to invest into it. But today I really want to talk about how my investment strategy today is moving towards the future and why you might be interested in it. Bitcoin used to be a kind of a, oh, a get rich for me, but I've totally changed my mindset and now it's a stay secure. I heard the other day, I was listening to something and it said, you know, only about 30% of people in the United States, and sorry, this is going to be a US centric stat or data point, but it's probably maybe worse in other parts of the world where they don't have the dollar. But it said in the United States, less than 30% of people are on track or 30% of adults are on track right now with the money that they're saving, either through a 401k, through a Roth IRA, in cryptocurrency, whatever it is, to be able to successfully retire by the age of 65. And what do I mean successfully retire? I mean, when that age comes, you have enough money that will either come off your interest from the investments you make from the time you're a younger adult to that point. So that way you can cover monthly expenses like your electricity bill, your Wi-Fi bill, rent, your mortgage, groceries, whatever it is. Only 30% or less are on track right now to meet that. And it's with that that many of the conversations I've had about Bitcoin have completely evolved over the last 16 months, 12 months, year, definitely in this last six months, is that Bitcoin for me is no longer a get rich scheme. It's a get secure scheme because I do believe, like many other people in the space, that Bitcoin will continue to grow. And as adoption of the asset and the asset and the overall cryptocurrency asset class becomes something that's a lot more not traditional, but accepted and respected, I see the price continuing to appreciate. And so I'm now using Bitcoin as a way to hedge my retirement to ensure that when I get to the age of 65 or 60 or 55 or whenever I am able to stop working, that I have enough money to cover my expenses. And that way I can live off my interest because that really is what Social Security is. Your employer will put some money aside and you'll put some money aside and that goes into a fund. And the idea of Social Security was now we can help the elderly retire with dignity, respect, and make sure that they're financially secure. But I don't see the stock market being able to do that. And I haven't put money in a 401k long enough to be able to do that. And like many people in the world we live in now, we're just not working at companies for 30 or 35 years and getting fat pensions. Unions are essentially a thing of the past. And if you work for one, that is a blessing. Hold on. But even if you do, your pension is still tied to the stock market and we can't have exponential growth forever. So that's where Bitcoin comes in. As Bitcoin grows and its adoption continues, I believe that Bitcoin is my new retirement. I believe it will supplement well my 401k and some of the other investment vehicles I have. But I believe that by the time I get to 50 or 60, which seems like a long way away, Bitcoin will probably be able to make me feel secure financially, which is why I take about $100 to $200 every month and I'll buy some Bitcoin. I don't really care about the price. And this is really what dollar cost averaging is. It's when you think there's something that's super valuable, whatever that is, Amazon stock, Facebook stock, or even real estate, you're just going to buy a little bit every month. You don't really care about the price because you're confident that it's going to continue to appreciate as long as the time horizon is long enough. So that's where I am today. I'm inviting people to invest in Bitcoin as a way to hedge against the stock market, which I don't know if we're going to have the growth that we've had over the last 20 or 30 years. We've had unbelievable changes in globalization and automation and banking, the derivatives. But for me, long term, stock market, 401ks, I don't think that's how my generation is going to be able to successfully retire. And it's a small risk for a big reward. By taking small amounts of money every month that I have, the risk is low, but I think the reward is quite great, especially when I'm using other and more traditional investment vehicles to kind of hedge this by getting my max match at my job, for example. I also don't think that there's a future in which Bitcoin isn't the way we buy houses or send our kids to college. And that is why I'm investing in Bitcoin.
Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. This was another episode where I'd actually written out an entire script of going through it and being a little bit more meticulous about what I was going to say. But I think focusing on the retirement and using it as a hedge, I think it's a really solid idea. And it's what I'm doing and it's paying off. Long term, my money is growing at a much greater rate than it would in a 401k or a Roth IRA. I want to make sure everyone has information. So if they want to go invest, they can. And like I say, even if you don't want to go invest, please go and create your accounts because you never know when you're going to want to buy crypto or Bitcoin. And when you do, you can't just like log on anywhere and do it. You have to have ID checks, your credentials checked, and you have to be able to link bank accounts. All this can take a couple days or even up to a week. So if you go to Instagram at Wi-Fi and Water Podcast, click the link in bio and there'll be three links you should check out. One is the playlist on YouTube where I have about 10 to 15 videos which talk more in depth about cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin. Go check those out. And the other two will invite you to create accounts on both Coinbase and Binance. And yes, they are affiliate links. What does that mean? That means I get a little kickback for every time I share some of this information and people create accounts using my referral code. So thank you so much. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Wi-Fi and Water Podcast. And reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. We'll see you next time.